The cost of living in the Caribbean is extremely high, and Jamaica is not an exception. With this series of videos, we are going to cover how much it actually costs to live and travel around Jamaica, and we shall start with grocery shopping. Obviously, like most countries in the world, Jamaica has everything necessary for convenient grocery shopping. Supermarkets, mini-marts, marketplaces and small street shops. Before we take a walk in the shops, it makes sense to mention currency. You can use either US dollars or the local currency called Jamaican dollars. The exchange rate slightly varies and at the time of the video, it's one US dollar equals 140 Jamaican dollars. For shopping at supermarkets, it doesn't matter what currency you use. They often have reasonable exchange rate if you wish to pay in US dollars. All supermarkets also accept credit cards. Keep in mind that the prices in supermarkets are presented with no tax, which is then added at the cashier. In a similar way, it is done in the United States. In Jamaica, it is called general consumption tax, and it is 16.5%. All prices I'm going to show in this video will be stated in US dollars to make it easier for foreigners to understand. Please also note, if you're buying fruits and vegetables, people tend to quote prices per pound in a marketplace, while supermarkets would usually have prices per kilogram. And just for your reference, one kilogram equals about 2.2 pounds. There are several large supermarket networks in big cities. As an example for this video, we are going to visit Progressive Foods in Montego Bay. Smaller towns in Jamaica don't have big supermarkets because the population is way too low for them to operate. However, there are plenty of mini-marts. A lot of people in Jamaica prefer to buy produce at marketplaces. And of course, it makes sense because there is a wide range of fresh fruits and vegetables from local farms and the prices are lower than in shops by about 20% on average. If you are a tourist, it's a good idea to visit a local market at least once during your stay. And you can always ask a local guide to take you there. You might not get the exact local prices, but it's always nice to support local farmers and get these delicious fresh things in return. Here I should also mention three interesting grocery shopping options that are specific to Jamaica. The first one would be push carts. Push carts are those homemade carts that can be seen all across Jamaica. Historically, they were created to transport cane, and they are still used to transport items, especially in marketplaces. But push carts are also common as a moving fruit stall. Some push carts can even be motorized. Back in the day, push carts were also used for racing in push cart derbies held across the island, an example of which was shown in a famous film, Cool Runnings. Sometime around the year 2000, pushcart racing discontinued. However, the enthusiasts are working on reviving this form of sport. If you're a Jamaican watching this, do you believe it's a good idea to have pushcart derby back? Share your opinion in the comments below. But back to grocery shopping options. Instead of supermarkets, a lot of local people prefer to buy food in meat marts, fish marts and bakeries. Let me show you a meat mart as an example. Well, obviously, it's a place where you can get meat. And usually there will be very competitive prices. But it's more than that. They often have these special deals when you can buy, say, chicken mix parts plus some rice plus some beans and spices. And it all goes as one package with a discount. Meat marts don't look fancy, but they always have good freezers, get new goods daily that are sold out fast and are usually conveniently located. The last thing to mention here before a walk to a supermarket is a haberdashery. Originally, this word meant business or person who sells small articles for sewing and dressmaking. But in Jamaica, it has a kind of a different meaning. A haberdashery is a small shop with a lot of miscellaneous items, including grocery. As a foreigner, you will never know what you can find there. Here is some food, items for plumbing, a kettle, just one. 
and a few toys for kids. So basically, anything you might need for everyday life. You might find it unusual, but these shops are actually lifesavers for people in smaller towns and communities who don't need to spend hours going to a big place with a supermarket. The interesting thing about haberdashery is that you can find food sold in tiny packaging. Like this tiny bag of rice, this tiny fish can, one carrot or one potato. The reason why things are sold in such a way is because some locals get paid on daily basis. So instead of going for a big day of shopping, they can pop into a haberdashery to get something for the evening. The downside of it, some people think that haberdasheries are actually cheap, while the truth is their prices are often twice higher than the prices in supermarkets. But since items are sold in tiny quantities, it is not that obvious. So of course, if you're a tourist and you only need a little something for one day, check out a haberdashery. But if you need food for a week, then a supermarket or a marketplace would be a much preferable option. Now let's go to a supermarket and see how much things really cost. I have to warn you though, the things that might be really cheap in your home country tend to be very expensive in Jamaica and vice versa. I've seen so many cases when tourists were shocked with having to pay over a hundred US dollars for some cereal, yogurts and coffee. Anyway, let's have a look to make sure you know what to expect and how to save money on grocery shopping. Let's begin with fruits, which you would expect to be cheap. Well, guess what? They're not. Jamaica has summer all year round, but of course such fruits as apples, pears and all sorts of berries that might be common in your home country do not grow in tropical climate. So most of them are imported from the United States, which results in quite high prices. For example, check out these apples that cost one and a half dollars per one. How about these grapes that's, what, six US dollars per pack? I mean, for this price, you can also get the whole four strawberries, hey? Basically, buying any of these exotic fruits is not a good idea. Well, local fruits are not much cheaper either, but at least they are affordable. For example, you can always find melons and watermelons that cost between two to three dollars per kilogram. Numerous citrus fruits are found throughout the year as well. There are green lemons and green oranges, but their taste is awesome. This bag of oranges costs around three US dollars. And don't forget your limes and grapefruits. The cheapest option for fruits would be bananas and plantain that cost around two US dollars per kilogram. Absolutely delicious pineapples and papayas don't cost too much either. Now, all of these fruits are available everywhere in Jamaica all year round, but of course there are also seasonal fruits. Some you might not even be aware of, like these potato-looking ones called nesbury. They taste like sugary jam. There are Jamaican apples, guinap, and of course aki. I mean, I will get into all of this in a separate video about fruits in Jamaica. But to finish off this fruit section, let's mention the king of the kings of all fruits mangoes. If you only tried a mango from a supermarket in Europe, this means you've never tried a mango. Those watery things have nothing in common with real mangoes that you get in Jamaica. With vegetables, the situation is a bit different because the price can vary heavily depending on the season. For example, sometimes the cabbage would cost about two US dollars per kilogram, on other months it would be almost four US dollars per kilogram. There is a limited variety of certain types of vegetables when compared to other countries. For example, there are usually two types of local tomatoes, the expensive ones and the very expensive ones. The other thing is potato. While in Jamaica it's only one or two types called Irish potato and its average price. However, there are a lot of other options of tubers that are actually much healthier. There is cassava, sweet potato and all varieties of yum imaginable. And I'm not even starting on breadfruit, which tastes something like potato and bread together. And all of these vegetables are available all year round. Among inexpensive and popular vegetables, you can find pumpkin, cucumber, beetroot, garlic, onions, and famous Jamaican scotch bonnet pepper that gives this unique flavor to Jamaican cuisine. Some of the cheapest and healthiest greens you can get in Jamaica is kalalo. It's a 
plant originally from Western Africa and it's from the same family as spinach. It is usually sold in these bags in supermarket. Jamaica is a part of the Caribbean. So as you can expect, all types of beans are in high demand, including white beans, chickpeas, green beans, and so on. But it's interesting that in Cuba, for example, the most popular are black beans, while in Jamaica, it would be red beans, which are locally referred to as peas. Now let's check out prices for meat and fish. You might think that because Jamaica is an island in the Caribbean, there should be plenty of cheap fish and seafood. Well, no. Unless you are on the south coast of Jamaica, where fishing industry is more developed, in the north, seafood, lobsters and shrimp and fish is not something people can afford to eat every day. Among seafood you have to try in Jamaica is conch. If you ever tasted calamari rings, well, conch is similar but better. And the price is about 8 US dollars per kilogram. Now check out the price for this local fish in supermarket. 20 US dollars for these three fish? I mean, come on. But of course, you can get cheaper fish at a fish mart or at a marketplace. Or even better, if you're lucky, you can buy fresh catch directly from the fishermen walking along the road. But back to supermarkets. You will see that quite a lot of frozen fish and seafood in supermarkets in Jamaica is sold by a company called Rainforest Seafoods. And it's quite good quality, but highly pricey stuff. The most common meat in Jamaica is chicken. Budget-friendly option would be mixed parts or just get a whole chicken at about five US dollars per kilogram. Beef and pork cost around 15 US dollars per kilogram on average. Chicken breasts would be around $13, while chicken bits and pieces would cost only $3.50 per kilo. Processed meats like ham and sausages are not popular. Keep in mind, the culture of eating sandwiches doesn't really exist in Jamaica. I mean, you can make sandwiches, but it's just not a thing here. Now about grains. If you are really short on money, like really, you can go for rice. Like this huge bag that can last you a week or even more costs less than $2. If you're planning to go camping or staying in a budget Airbnb without a kitchen, you can try this noodle soup or just noodles that only need hot water to add. For people who love pasta, well, it's sold in smaller bags and costs around 130 US dollars per one. The other fun fact to mention is, as you know, brown sugar is quite expensive in Europe. But of course, Jamaica is a country that used to be a large producer of cane sugar. So brown sugar is cheaper in Jamaica, 130 per kilogram, while white sugar costs around 250. Let's move to sweets and bakery now. Bakery products in Jamaica are very different from European. Not sure how it compares to American market, but let me show you a few examples. You can find big cakes like these at price around 18 US dollars per cake. You have smaller ones at around 450. But if we look at pastry in general, there is one important thing that has to be taken into account. Over 70% of adults of West African descent are lactose intolerant. And this includes most people in the Caribbean. But you might wonder, how is that relevant? Well, the main ingredient of a lot of bakery products in Europe is milk. While in Jamaica, you will find a replacement, such as soy milk, almond milk, coconut milk, and so on. Sure, you can find cakes like these that are cooked with milk, but the demand for them is lower, while the price is higher. Flour prices are around 120 per kilogram, quite affordable. But if we take bread, it tastes very different from the kind of bread you would find in Europe or North America. When foreigners taste it for the first time, some don't like it, but others say it's the best bread they have ever tried in their life. So give it a go and decide for yourself. There are several brands that produce local milk. And it is delicious, like really good. The price is about 280 per liter, which isn't too bad. While we're here, eggs are three dollars per dozen. But everything else when it comes to dairy is kinda expensive. Because again, the demand is low and a lot of items are imported. For example, Gouda cheese is 60 US dollars per kilogram. 
Rockford is 80, I mean, that's why we were very happy to discover local Jamaican cheese that only comes at 15 US dollars per kilo. Another thing to mention is cereal. They are around from 5 to 10 US dollars per pack. Unlike in the United States, not many people in Jamaica eat cereal, like ever. There is a very different type of breakfast here, which I certainly suggest you try. As for cooking oils, there are two common and cheapest options that locals use. Either vegetable oil, largely consisting of soybean oil, and margarine, which is less than $2 per kilogram. Unfortunately, not many people know that margarine is the worst thing for health to use. But what's the alternative? Like proper butter costs around $20 per kilogram compared to margarine, which is what, 10 times cheaper? Still, it's better to choose vegetable oil or, if you can afford it, local coconut oil, which is around $8.30 per litre, or sunflower oil, around $5. Soda is very cheap. For example, there are local brands called Bigger or DNG with prices around 75 cents per liter. Even international soda drinks are cheap, like Coke is around, what, 80 cents per liter? You will see some local brands for juices, like True Juice. Some of them made with natural juice, others with concentrate. I personally recommend trying Sorel juice. It's prepared with ginger and you're either gonna hate it or you're gonna fall in love with it and it will become your favorite juice. That's what happened to me. You will also see that ginger is a master plant in Jamaica that is added into a lot of things like cakes, juices and other drinks, while some beer comes with lemon or sorrel. By the way, Red Stripe, famous Jamaican beer. If you love beer, that's the brand to go for. In supermarket, this bottle costs around 140 US dollars, while in a bar, it might cost up to about $5. The alternative to Red Stripe would be, well, pretty much just one. It's Heineken, which is also produced in Jamaica by the very same company. There are plenty of choices for rum, though, with bottles going for around 20 US dollars per litre. But we'll go more into details about rum in a separate video. The last but not least, Jamaican coffee, which grows high in Blue Mountains and rightly considered one of the best coffees in the world and one of the most expensive ones too. This 450 gram bag is 42 US dollars, which means you have to pay 93 US dollars per kilogram of coffee. And you guessed it, Jamaicans don't drink that much coffee. And if they do, it's mostly instant coffee. So, if you're traveling on a budget, it's better to buy things that locals buy. Because if you're going shopping to a supermarket in Jamaica and decide to buy foods that you usually buy in your home country, like yogurt, cereal, apples, processed meats and butter, don't be surprised when at the cashier you would have to spend a fortune. The other thing to mention, you will see prices in Jamaican dollars and sometimes it can be confusing to understand how much things really cost. That's why I suggest just divide by 100 to get a price in US dollars. It wouldn't be precise, but it will give you an idea. If you're thinking of relocating to Jamaica, you will probably need to change your eating habits. And most likely, it's going to be a good change. And of course, if you're interested in Jamaica, don't forget to subscribe and check all the videos on this channel. Thank you so much for watching. If you find this episode useful, don't forget to share it with others. My name is Irina, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.